The Challenge of the Yukon. Hong King! Hong you Husky! King, the swiftest, strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the Yukon during the gold rush of 98. That was the year that brought over 50,000 men swarming into the Klondike region, and the greed for gold led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, the force preserved a splendid record in maintaining the right. The challenge of the North was answered, and justice ruled triumphant. The bank in Dobie City was a small frame building rich in gold deposits from some of the finest claims in the Yukon. Late afternoon, two men faced Bid Miller, Dobie's banker. Guns leveled as the small man faced them defiantly. You won't dare to shoot. The whole town would be here in two minutes. Two minutes would be all we need to get out of here. Open that safe, Miller. I'm not opening those safe doors. What do you want to fool around for, Sam? Go on, let him have it. For the last time... Open that safe. You'll never get away with this. We'll get away with it, all right. What are you waiting for? Go on, turn that combination. Ah, that's what I call being real persuasive now, Sam. Yeah. Maybe our friend here is sensible after all. Well, you'll see how sensible I am. He might carry this gold out of here. But mark my words, you'll never get away with it. Open the doors. Uh, lift that gold out of the safe. All of it. Yeah. You don't want to miss any. Oh, this is even better than you said. What a haul this is. Wait till the boss sees it. Any more in there? Any more? Do you see any more? I guess Shorty here is giving us all the help we need, Tony. Yeah, I get you, Sam. No, no. Wait a minute. You talk too much. This is just to keep you from putting some miners on our trail. You dirty yellow skunks. There ain't a drop of red blood in either of you. I'll see them. That's it. It'll be a long time before he can tell anything. Gather up the rest of them folks. The sooner we get out of here, the better. Sergeant Preston was a good three hours from Dobie City as he urged King on toward a small cabin standing alone in a clearing. A strong wind bit into him sharply. On, King! On, you husky! <laughs> ah, that smoke from the chimney certainly looks good. All right, King. Ho, you huskies. Ho, ho. That's it, fella. We'll stop in to see Mort Kramer. Hey, what's... The... Hello there, Mort. How are you? Well, Preston, it's a long time since you stopped by in these parts. Oh, just on my way to Doby, Mort. I thought I'd stop in for a while. How's everything going? Well, about the same as usual. Come on in. So cold up here, I don't know how men stand it. Well, that's the you gun for you. As I remember it, you never did like the climate. <laughs> you want to bring your dog in? No, no, King will stay out here. We'll rest a few minutes before going on. Sit down. Tell me what brings you to these parts. You say you're going to Dobie City? Well, that's right. Yep. That's uh, gold robberies again, Mort. Oh, yeah? A group of men have been systematically robbing banks all the way from Skagway to... Well, that's just it. To where? One after the other. Well, you got any information that makes you think they're around here? Yes and no. If I'm right, I have a hunch Dobie will be their next stopping off place. Well, it all goes to prove I'm right. I always said it's no use banking your dust. Just puts it all in one place for the first smart crook that comes along to clean up. Oh, I think you're wrong there, Mort. Banks are necessary up here. And it's up to the law to protect them. Maybe I shouldn't say so. But you ain't done much protecting up to now. I mean, well, they were robbed. You've got a point in favor of your argument, Mort. But it's my job to stop those robberies. I wish you luck, Sergeant. They must be a mighty slick gang. Now, what's that? Hey, get down, you mutt. Hey, what's the idea? This is a fresh team. What do you two want? What do we want? Are these friends of yours, Mort? Friends of mine. I never saw them before. The money. Uh, if you two stop for grub, Yeah, well, we thought we could buy some from you, mister. Looks more to me as if you thought you could take my team. <laughs> it's all right, King. 
Where are you heading for? Pikeston. And if it's all the same to you, Monty, we'll march. Where'd you come from? Why the gun, Sergeant? They don't These like... men will have to come to Doby with me, Mort. Doby? Oh, well, you're daft. We're going to Pikeston. You're both going to Doby with me and explain those bags from the Doby City Bank on your sled. What? Oh, I say. I didn't ever notice them. They weren't very carefully put on the sled. Two of them slipped from under that pack. All right, you two. Here, put these handcuffs on the Mort. No, you can't do this. Well, he's doing it, ain't he? Now, shut up. Maybe you think your boss can get you out of this one, huh? Maybe he better, mister. Hey, these might be the men you were looking for, Sergeant. Well, we'll soon find out. I imagine the banker and Doby will be able to throw a lot of light on the subject. Get the dogs up, King. All right, just a minute, Sergeant. I'll go to Doby with you. It ain't every day I get a chance to watch the law working on bank robbers. It was late afternoon as Sergeant Preston closed the doors on his two prisoners in Doby City. And it was an excited banker who stood by, grinning triumphantly. Yes, sir. They're the ones, all right. Made me open a safe that hit me on the head. I still got a bump. Oh, still hurts, too. I wanted you to identify them, Bid. Last thing I said to them was that they wouldn't get away with it. <laughs> now who's laughing, boys? <laughs> Sergeant Preston, I got to hand it to you. If it hadn't been for you... Well, I hate to think of what would have happened. It's a little too soon to hand anything to anybody, Bid. Uh, what do you mean, Sergeant? Well, it's true that we've got the robbers jailed. And you've got the gold back in the bank. Seems to me no, that's about... No, no, there's more to it than that. Much more. You see, Bid, there's someone else behind these robberies. I'm convinced of it. Say. Hmm? Now that you mention it, when I swung the safe doors open, one of them said, just wait till the boss sees this. Did they say anything else? Anything more definite? No, no, that's all. Maybe you can get them to tell who it is. Uh, they're all alike. Once they get in a tight spot, they'll tell everything they know. Uh, I've already talked to them. No luck? No. But they may change their minds. I'm convinced that these are the men who've been responsible for those robberies in Belle Vista, Doriston, High Top. If you're right, then they're the ones that must have killed O'Toole in High Top. Hey, look, Sam. We got visitors again. Hey, well, what do you want, Molly? I'm giving you two a chance to lighten your sentences. That's mighty interesting. But if you're here to ask for names, you're wasting your time. A miner's jury won't go easy on you unless you help me get the man in back of you two. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. You're right on one thing. We got everything to gain just by staying here waiting. And waiting for what? You'll be convicted of robbery while your boss makes a getaway with the gold he's holding from those other banks. Marty, we ain't talking. Well, suit yourself. There's a chance for you to help yourself. We'll get help, all right. And you can put this in your books. We won't be here long enough to be convicted by a miner's jury. See? Uh, easy to see they ain't got a brain between them. There ain't a soul in Dobie to be likely to spread the news of you two being in jail where it'd do you any good. We don't need anybody to spread the news, Shorty. All right. Come on, Bid. Save your breath, Marnie. You'll need it to explain why your jail's empty when the jury gets together. Well, what do you make of it, Sergeant? You seem mighty sure of themselves. Yes. Too sure. Well, I don't understand it. Well, there's only one explanation. What's that? Put yourself in their place, Bid. If you were jailed here in Doby City and your boss was, say, over in Pikeston, what would you do? Why, uh... I'd try to get word to him, I guess. You wouldn't be so sure that you could get word to him in time to get out of facing a trial that's two days away, would you? No, I wouldn't. And if I was in their shoes, I'd either make sure he'd face that trial with me, or I'd break my neck seeing somebody that'd tell him to get me out of jail or else. Well, they haven't talked to anyone since Mort and I brought them in. And yet they're so plumb sure that... Well, it beats me. There's only one answer to it. The man we're looking for must be right here in Doby City. Right here. Say, who, who do you suppose? That must be it. Yes, of course it is. In that case, the only thing to do is to double the guard on the jail and make sure he don't get the chance to spring them. By golly, that's it. And when they see that trial coming up and no help from their boss, no, they'll no, be... No, I think, Bid, that we'll force his hand. What? We'll give this boss of theirs just the chance he's waiting for. Well, I don't get you. You mean you know who he is? No, I don't know who he is. Well, then... Uh... You're going to take a chance on leaving the jail unguarded? If we leave the jail obviously unguarded, he suspects the trick immediately. 
Remember, this is the man responsible for a string of bank robberies that he's gotten away with up till now. Well, he'd be too smart to fall for a trap like that. I'll need your help, Bid and King. I'll do anything I can. But I still don't see King how... and I are going down to the wharf and upstream a bit. Tomorrow morning, I want to give... Early the next morning, miners thronged the streets in Dobie City. They were gathered in the cafe, in the general store, and lounging outside the frame buildings bordering Main Street. When suddenly, Bid Miller came racing from the wharf at the riverfront at the street's end. Hey! There's a man in the river! The Texas dog's trying to pull him out! What? Yeah! Man in the river! I want to see that! Come on, Mike! It was a stampede. Men who were hungry for excitement and entertainment raced down to the wharf. Some of them already laying bets on whether or not the dog would be successful in pulling the man out of the rushing waters of the Yukon River. As Bid ran past the jail, he called to the guard. Don't you want to see it, Clem? Yes, yeah, sure. Bid. Come on, this is too good to miss. Sandy can keep his eyes on them two prisoners. Hey, got him right with you, Bid. I'll make you two to one. That dog don't make him. The street that only two minutes before had been crowded with men was deserted. Mort Kramer walked out of the cafe and slipped up behind the one guard left standing outside of the jail. The man was facing the wharf, listening intently to the wild cries of the miners. He never realized his danger till Mort was upon him. <laughs> now they get the keys. Ah, good. Lady Luck's playing right into my hands. Now to find which one of these is... What the... Mort. Yeah, it's me. For a while there, he's beginning to worry about you. You knew better than that. What did you think I came to town with the money for? What did I tell you, Sam? <laughs> See? Boy, will that money be surprised. How'd you manage this? Preston managed it. All right, come on. My sled's in back at the cafe. What do you mean, Preston managed it? Every miner in town is watching that dog of his pull some fool out of the river. Oh, his dog, huh? I hope that mutt never gets out. Just the chance I was waiting for. Yeah, it's a good thing for you it came up. Because if it hadn't, we'd have told enough about them robberies to hang you. you. fool, what could I do in front of Preston? Come on, we've wasted enough time. Preston might be back any minute. You're wrong, Mort. Not any minute. Right now. Preston. Let those keys put your hands up. This was a trap, you fool. Yes, it was a trap. But I thought... You thought I was down at the river with the miners. That the coast was clear. I should have known when these two stopped at your cabin, Mort, that it was all prearranged. That your cabin is the hideout. I've got enough evidence now to put you just where you belong. Hey, Sergeant, what happened to Sandy? That wasn't any man. Just a dummy. Somebody stuck the suit of clothes and sent it down the river. <coughs> it worked, Sarge? Mort! Yes, Bid, it worked. Mort Kramer is the man we're looking for. I was standing behind the office door waiting for him. And he walked right into the trap. I think we'll find the gold from those other robberies out at his cabin. Well, I'll Sergeant, be... Sergeant, I don't get this. You'll hear about it in court tomorrow, Tim. Lock them all up, Bid. <coughs> <laughs> well, even if it was a dummy, you should have seen that dog of yours swimming. I never seen anything like it. Ah, <laughs> uh, good work, fella. Good work. Yes, with your help, another case has been solved. <laughs> Upholding the motto of the Northwest Mounted Police, Sergeant Preston and the great dog King maintain the right and get their man. Don't miss their next thrilling adventure when they meet the challenge of the Yukon once again on Saturday at the same time. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature of the Challenge of the Yukon, Incorporated, brought to you every Saturday at this time, originated in the transcription studios of WXYZ Detroit. The characters and events in tonight's drama were fictitious. 